I'm Eugene Ralph, um, and I'm here today with Jordan Lewis, who's running for judge, judgeship on the 162nd Judicial District Court here in Dallas County. And anyone in Dallas County can vote for him. That's the great part about it. Is that right? That's right. That's right. If you live in Dallas County, it doesn't matter which city, uh, I'll be on your ballot. Probably page 14, so keep going until you see my name. <laughs> yeah, so vote to the bottom of the ballot on the Republican ticket and you will find a Jordan Lewis. We're asking all voters to vote to the bottom of the ballot on the Republican ticket so we can get our Republican elected officials in office. So uh, Jordan, are you currently holding office or is your first time around? It's my first time to ever consider uh, politics. Uh, <laughs> I, I was uh, briefly involved in politics in college for about a year, helped some people with their campaigns. But, but between that and uh, this year, it's been a long time. So. Wow. Yeah, uh, a unique experience, I suppose. It, it is, you know. I, running as a Republican, I think I grew up as a kid with this. That doesn't exist. It's just a bunch of people who really care about their community, who stand up. No one's paying them necessarily. <laughs> They're just getting up each day and saying, "Hey, somebody has to fight for our community. Somebody has to do everything they can." <laughs> And uh, I'm learning that the hard way. So. so just to share with you uh, about the vast right wing conspiracy, that's just the left who actually have a conspiracy. That's their, their way to throw off the, uh, the, 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 the optics from themselves. You know, uh, years ago, this guy, he's a country boy, he told me, I was with in a, in, a, in, a, in a debate, an argument or whatever, he said, you see, you're just committing a red herring. I'm like, what is that? He said, that's when you actually accuse someone else of something that is that actually should be you or something but in other words to deflect so in order to deflect often they throw out things like that and, and it has a way of resurfacing but the first time I heard it was when Hillary Clinton was defending Bill for his, uh, his idiosyncrasy so but anyway um, so this office here um, basically what, it, what what type of court is this this is criminal court uh, judge um, civil court so it's a civil court, so we're not dealing with criminal matters per se. Okay. Um, although you've seen recently that sometimes um, civil judges can throw people in jail. Uh, it, it should be a, truly a last recourse. Um, but civil courts are very important because they decide constitutional matters, uh, specifically not just uh, Texas constitutional matters, but they often do consider matters of, of uh, the U.S. Constitution uh, that that are subject uh, or inherent to state issues, mm -hmm. and so um, civil courts are the first the first line for a lot of people when they enter into the court system. Mm -hmm. But it's also the place that they're the least likely um, to get the the benefit of the actual law. The civil judges have a lot of power, and they can uh, impose huge burdens on people through judgments. Um, but the the uh, the publication of legal treatises and uh, opinions usually happens at the appellate level. Okay. And so if you have a judge who really isn't centered in the law and who definitely has no respect for the Constitution, it can be tremendously difficult for the community who is subject to that judge because to seek relief, they have to go through the time and expense of filing an appeal and the appeals courts are overburdened already right. um, as it is. So. That's pretty interesting. Um, so how long have you been practicing law? So I've been practicing law uh, since 2014. Mm -hmm. um, I clerked for a federal uh, bankruptcy judge, mm -hmm. uh, Judge Harlan Hale. Uh, I, was, I was fortunate to have such a great mentor at the start of my legal career. Um, but actually prior to that, I spent several years as a paralegal, uh, which gives me the benefit of knowing the law, but also from the uh, layman's side of things prior to, to doing that. I did that since uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so after clerking for the judge, I had a private practice here in uh, downtown Dallas. Mm -hmm. I clerked for a, a great firm uh, called Cavazos Hendricks, I admire every one of the people there. Everyone, uh, they were actually all believers, and every Monday they would meet, and they'd pray over their cases, and they'd pray over one another, the paralegals, the, uh, you know, the lawyers, the entire staff would get together and just pray together over prayer needs, cases, issues, things that were bothering them. That's pretty awesome. So, you know, I, I, I um, you answered, you answered my next question, was, was going to be your guiding philosophy for how you, did, you know, making decisions on cases. Obviously, the law, which, which I mean, you can answer this question. You know, what is your guiding philosophy for making your decisions when you have to make a 
decision on a case, uh, what would you say is your personal constitution? So I think that it's very important to, to, to understand that about a judge. I think it, it's key to understanding whether or not uh, he or she is going to be uh, to give you justice and mercy in the right, um, in the right quantities. Okay. For me, you start with the constitutionality of it, and the, and the reason that that's very important is uh, the Constitution is the limit of the government's authority over you and the state's authority over you, and um, to the, if you have a law that involves the state or the federal government, you need to understand first and foremost whether that, that law is within the constitutional rights that were endowed to that governmental entity. Okay. So you, you start there, and then you look at <clears throat> where the if it is constitutionally valid mm -hmm. then you apply the laws that the legislation that the legislature has written as they've written it you look at the original intent you look at as it's written um, and you don't try to create law where you don't see it wow that's pretty awesome you know i've um, i personally and I, I think there's a lot of people that would agree with me is that uh, many times we see that regardless of whether what type of court it is whether civil or or, or, or criminal we see that lawyers, I mean, uh, judges rule, and they rule based on their predisposed uh, opinions. And uh, that's often referred to as judicial activism. Um, to hear someone explain the fact that you want to rule based on the law is actually very refreshing these days. Now, I know many people say that, but, you know, you, you say that this is, you know, obviously you don't have a track record to back that up at this point, but you're telling me that <clears throat> this is your belief system based on your understanding of the law. So that's pretty exciting to hear. Um, so, so far you've been running, how long have you been running so far? Uh, since December of last year, so not, uh, not very long. Yeah. Okay. All right. So roughly seven months. And, uh, and uh, so what are what some of the things you've seen as far as some of the challenges you're facing uh, running here in Dallas County? Well, there's just the fact that there's a lot going on right now politically and nationally. Uh, 2020 has seen uh, you know, the inability of people like myself to go to all parts of the city and communicate directly with the people. There's some, some parts, some groups of people, I would say probably Republicans and really conservatives, are willing to meet right now. Um, but there's a lot of people who are really afraid and anyone who is listening to a lot of the media out there is is terrified. And I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to dismiss anyone's concerns because people have lost people and right. we never want to take that lightly. Right. Um, so I, I believe that it's important for me to exercise caution and to take every precaution necessary to protect myself and of the people who are in my community, those at high risk from from being harmed, from right. transmitting any sort of disease, right. um, but at the same time, to not to not live in fear. And as a, as a person of faith, bluntly, my hands, my life is not in my hands. It's ultimately in His hands. That's right. And He's in my days are numbered according to how He's numbered them. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Um, I'm not worried about that. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Uh, but at the end of the day, I. I want to make sure that I'm being a good example and leading well for everyone, uh, for those who are, are scared and for those who are um, upset right now about all the misinformation. That's right. You know, and it's actually, again, it's refreshing to hear you uh, make those statements because uh, I've been making those statements, some of those statements since this whole thing began. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're not, it's not that we're callous about this whole, it, the virus is real, the, the potential danger is real. If you get the disease, it's real. And the uh, going suffering through it and the overcoming it is also real. Um, and sometimes, unfortunately, death is also real as a result of it. But at the same time, we cannot live life in fear. You know, as Christians, we're taught that we're to not live in fear. We're to not make decisions in fear. And it's re very refreshing to hear any candidate for any office, regardless of party, take that position. So I just want to commend you on that. Um, what do you believe are some of the things you would like to accomplish as judge on this court, um, provided you want? Sure. It, 
as judge, there, I, I see it as two roles. Okay. One, there's the judge role where you're actually deciding cases between the people, and that's what people think of when they think of the job. But there's also this concept of a judge as a leader, and that's, um, you know, as a, a leader of the community, I'm, I'm qualified to be a judge. I, I'm, I'm licensed in Texas. I'm also licensed in Louisiana. You know, I've uh, practiced uh, for the number of years required, and I've, I've handled cases um, in courts of all kinds, including state courts. I've, I've handled state court matters of all kinds. And so I understand the issues um, at the state level that are being decided in those courtrooms. And uh, I will make sure in the courtroom as that I apply the judicial philosophy, which I believe is appropriate, and which I believe all lawyers and all judges should apply candidly. Mm -hmm. But I'm also there as a representative of our communities. And as uh, a person who lives in Dallas, who has neighbors, who has children, who um, you know is on the boards of nonprofits to to try to fight all the different issues that we face as a community. Um, you know, sex trafficking is one that really uh, bothers me about that we have an issue here in Dallas. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one one organization that I've been involved with uh, goes and uses nuisance actions in the civil courts mm -hmm. and and takes down drug houses and flop houses and houses of prostitution and uh, you know that's those are issues decided in that kind of court. Well, the people who live in those communities don't know about the rights available, the city resources available to them, the, the things, the people they can call, the things that they can do as an individual mm -hmm. to take down that derelict landlord mm -hmm. or that person down the street who is allowing those things to happen on their property, those that, you know, that, that gun violence that's occurring in their neighborhood, what do they do about it? Do they just cower in fear at night? Do they keep their kids inside? Do they move? Or do they take action? Do they have the, the ability to take action and use the legal system and use the, the resources that the city has available to actually stand up for their community? And so as a judge, I would, A, decide with you know justice and mercy in the courtrooms, <clears throat> but B, I would really raise awareness about uh, how those courts can be used for all the citizens of Dallas to better their communities. That is awesome. You know, having that education component to your to your idea of serving I think is something that's tremendous and I believe that is something that's so desperately needed throughout our communities throughout the city of Dallas not just Dallas but everywhere and I honestly man I I, I wish so I mean I pray I will, I will be praying for, for your, your campaign that yes. you win because um, you know in all honesty we need people who are in these positions to use those to advance good things, right? Not just to hold the position. Most people hold the position and they like to take care of all the perks they go with the job, right? Which is nothing wrong with that in and of itself. But at the same time, <clears throat> use it for good, for, for accomplishing uh, things that ordinarily would be major hurdles for other people to accomplish. There's organizations out there trying to do some of those very same things. But when it comes from the judge, someone who the, the community has already decided that we trust you, because you know, when we think about it, you know, I think most people today, because we've had, we have such a sort of a perverted political system. But most people, when you know, if you go back a few years, when they would think about someone who held a position of a judge, that was one of the most highest esteemed offices that anybody could hold, because they were looking at somebody who's going to be fair and impartial, it, regardless of the circumstances, regardless to who hollers the loudest, regardless to who is the person who has the most money, the judge was the person who was going to actually make an even killed righteous decision. At least that's what we saw on television, right? Right. Okay, because, but you got to keep in mind, that idea was born out of somewhere. It didn't just create itself. So many of us grew up with this, uh, we call it, you know, sort of naive now, but we grew up with this sense of justice that we believe that this is what we should expect. And it's so refreshing for to hear somebody speak with passion about this very thing. So I am excited about your campaign. And Thank we're you. going to be praying for you for this, that you will be successful. And we you will be our next judge on the 162nd Judicial District Court of Thank Dallas you. County. Jordan Lewis, ladies and gentlemen, is the man that we want to vote for a down ballot to have him elected to represent us. Is there anything you'd like to say to us in closing? Well, first of all, absolutely, uh, desperately need your prayers. The prayers of the righteous avail much. And 
you know, that, that's going to be key. If, if God wants this to happen, it's going to happen. Um, but I'd encourage those of you who want to get involved, who would like to support the campaign, uh, my uh, information is, uh, my website is Lewis, the number four, Dallas, lewis 4 dallascom uh, You can find me on Twitter, JM uh, Lewis 4 Dallas, uh, Facebook, Lewis 4 Dallas with the number four. And so I'm on Instagram as well. So I, I would love for you to come by, learn about, learn about how you can get involved. We'd love for you to volunteer, uh, tell your friends about our campaign. If, you're, if you want to stand for your community, we want to equip you with what you need to be able to do that. So please, get involved, get engaged, and we hope to see you soon. Amen. Jordan Lewis for Dallas County District Court, 162nd Judicial District Court, and we, we encourage you to uh, take a serious consideration of this campaign and uh, visit his website and, uh, and get involved. You know, one of, one of the things that we do, one of the reasons why we're doing this is because we want, first of all, people to find out who you are, but also we want to encourage people who are citizens, who are, in, you know, you'd sit really sick and tired of sitting at home for COVID, um, to come on out to, you know, when you're invited to be a part of something, you want to wear a mask, you know, you're, you're welcome to do that. You know, those of us don't want to wear a mask, we don't want you to bother us about that. But the <laughs> but thing is, we respect people who want to wear masks if that's what you want to do. But come on out and get to know the candidates when we have these, these little gatherings or whatever. But also, these candidates are going to need people to knock doors, to make phone calls, to help in some way, literally help in some way their campaign. So we invite you to come out and do that. And we'll be putting up some uh, information about that as, as, as the time rolls on. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Really appreciate it.